All right, what's going on guys? My name is Alex Whittick and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today guys, I'm super hyped and I hope you guys are hyped as well. Guys, we're going to be doing a 20,000 subscriber giveaway, so make sure you're subscribed, hit that post notification bell, and follow my Instagram at tilted underscore TDI. Guys, we're going to be building some one-off custom camber arms for this Audi TT, and I'm super excited. We got some parts in the mail. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of welding today, so stay with me, stay excited, and let's get to it. You guys, before we rip this TT apart so we can rip these camber arms out of this car, I do want to show you guys I got some parts in the mail. I'm not going to tell you what's in there, but just know this week is going to be real fun for videos. We got more parts coming in and they're not slowing down so stay excited for that so what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to jack this car up. we're gonna have to remove this camber arm on this car we're gonna use the existing camber arm. we're gonna use some parts that I'm gonna show you guys in a minute what we're gonna be using and we're gonna use the existing bodies we're gonna chop it in half we're gonna hack these things up and we're gonna put some nice TIG welds on here and I'm really excited I hope you guys are as well so I got my metal I was gonna use some stainless steel but we actually got this metal right here and then I got these double adjusters I had existing bungs we got a 5 8 thread on here so these things are nice and thick we're gonna chop the arm in half we're gonna cut some length off of the arm we're gonna put this right in the middle so we can thread in or out we're gonna have some sick camera arms and this only cost me $18 so you can't complain about that and uh, yeah I hope you guys are excited now let's build some custom one-off parts I got that back wheel off, but the front wheel actually fell off because it wasn't actually bolted up because the front suspension is taken out. If you guys saw the video the other day where we convert the top hat from a Mark V on into a Mark IV, the link will be in the description for that one. But I didn't put the coilover back on because I'm still waiting on some parts. But let's go ahead and let's take this out. So what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to be chopping this piece in half. It's just a square piece. It goes all the way to the back there. We're going to cut it in half. First, we're going to remove the whole thing, cut it in half, and then we're going to put that double adjuster in there and uh, we're gonna be ripping. We're gonna have some nice camber. So I hope you guys are excited. Also, this car has already some tow arms on here. This car had camber arms at one point and the previous owner just didn't give them to me. So we're just gonna make our own tow arms. Let's get to it. We got the bolt out that connects the camber arm to the hub assembly. Now the one bolt that I do need to get to now is all the way back there in the back. And uh, the car isn't that high off the ground, so I'm definitely going to have to squeak in there. My white sweatshirt might get a little dirty, but that's part of the fun. So uh, let's rip this thing out of there, and uh, I'm excited to weld it. All right, so I've been trying to get this thing off for a little bit now. The bolt is kind of seized on there. Usually I'd apply some heat with my torch, but the uh, the gas tank's right there, so I can't apply any heat. So I've just been trying to bash it. I've been trying to link up wrenches so I can get that extra leverage and stuff, but nothing seen, seeming to do it. So I'm really crossing my fingers that we can get this thing off without uh, using a grinder or something, but uh, I think we're going to get it. As you can see that bolt is super seized. We got it to move about half an inch. This was not the attire for me to be wearing. Completely destroyed the sweatshirt and uh, yeah. These aren't the pants to be wearing either. I'm wearing like a like a family type nice clothing today because it's Easter, not thing to do. So I'm gonna go upstairs, grab another sweatshirt and uh, head back out here and destroy that one. I took my sweatshirt off and then I realized it was warm out here. It's not even cold, it's a little bit breezy but it's like 65, really nice weather today. And uh, I just went back underneath the car after I was struggling for so long and I literally just, uh, and I muscled right through it and I got the bolt loose. So I'm, I'm starting to work it back and forth now. We're probably gonna get it out pretty soon and we can finally just rip this arm out. I'm so excited to weld this thing. So if you have a Volkswagen, BMW, or an Audi, you always have that one friend who doesn't wanna help you work on your car. And you're always wondering, why is that? And if that bolt doesn't explain, I don't know if you guys can see that bolt right there, but it is hitting the subframe bolt. Hopefully you guys picked it up in the time lapse, but that subframe bolt is actually in the way of me taking out that control arm bolt. You can't just slide the bolt out. You gotta take the whole subframe bolt out. So I'm gonna get to that. Hopefully the subframe bolt can just get removed. Take that bolt out, put the subframe bolt back in. And then when I put it back in later, I'll put the bolt head side on the opposite side. So the nut goes on the subframe side, which was the same thing that that happened with the Mark V. You would think that they maybe changed that, but anyway, I'm gonna get that out. So we got that bolt out, it came out absolutely so easy. The easiest bolt to take out was the subframe bolt. I just loosened it up with my breaker bar I usually tighten my wheel up with, and uh, we got it right off. We literally just took the impact, drilled it out, put it back in after we got the bolt out, and now we'll just take it from the opposite way and feed the bolt back in the opposite way so we won't hit the subframe bolt when we put it back in. But let's finally take this mount out, take it into the shop, cut this thing up, and get to welding. I got the control arm out of there. We're gonna chop this thing in half. It's a little bit, a little bit longer than you know the traditional camber arm, but we're gonna cut this thing in half. We're gonna put this threaded end right here. We're gonna put a bung in one side, a bung in the other, and uh, 
yeah, we're gonna take some length out of this thing. We're gonna add it back with this and this thing's gonna be fully adjustable. All right, so I got the controller mount. I did some math. I've got a piece of cardboard here with all the measurements on here. This camera arm's total length is 21 and three quarter inches long. I'm gonna remove three and a half inches from it. It's thread, so the threaded piece right here is four and a quarter inches long. The bung is one and a quarter inches long and it's stick out from when I cut it and I put it in there is gonna be quarter of an inch. So we're gonna remove a total of three and a half inches from this camera arm. So we're just gonna take this, mark this out to three and a half inches. We're gonna mark it. We're gonna chop these ends off with a cutoff wheel. We're gonna make these bungs sit inside of a piece like this. We're gonna drill a hole in it. You guys are excited I know about it, so let's get to it. As you guys saw, we got that arm all cut up. We got this three and a half inch piece on the floor right here. Goes to the trash. We got these two pieces that we could just sandwich together if we wanted to. Honestly, we'd have like negative 30 degrees of camber if we did that, but no. We're gonna put, we're gonna clean these up. We're gonna get these bungs all prepared so we can weld them into this. We're gonna drill a hole into that steel so that each bung can just be welded to this. And we'll be able to extend this thing three and a half inches back to stock or we'll be able to sink it in three and a half inches, so. Well, give or take with the nuts and stuff, about two and a half inches, but two and a half inches is going to do a lot. So I just went ahead, we cleaned off all the paint, we got all the burrs off these, these are looking really good, ready to be welded. Now the next step, we're going to have to drill those holes in here with the step bit, so let's get to it. So I got my little pieces for each end, cut out, ready to go, cap that off, cap that off. I got my stepper right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the holes into these after I clean these up, I'm gonna weld them on here, just to attack them, and then we're gonna put the piece in there to center everything out, the bungs, and then we're gonna weld everything up so nothing moves. You know how it goes, if you weld, you know that the metal actually transforms and it bends a little bit, so we're gonna tack each side, gonna put those bungs in there, weld the bungs up at the same time, we're gonna start welding on the sides, and this is gonna look awesome. So I got my two first tacks down on this piece. Now I'm not happy with them because I had my amperage set at 120 amps. This metal I think is 16 gauge, super thin, not something you wanna run that high of a heat at. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it down to about 60 amps and I'm gonna try to get another bead on each side and then we're gonna drill the hole for this bung and then we're gonna drop this bung in. This is super hot. I got all four sides welded up. I actually decided to drill the hole afterwards because I figured it might bow in the center and I didn't want any of that. So I wanted it to pull tight if it was going to. So I got all four sides completely welded up. Well, it's look pretty good. I didn't use filler on some of the sides because the piece actually was hanging over. So I used that as a filler and just blended it into itself. I got this magnet right here, it's kind of annoying. Still gotta wire brush that side, but since that's capped off, now we're gonna add we're gonna drill the holes and then we're gonna put the bungs in there and then we're gonna weld the bungs inside. There we go, just like that. I got my welding helmet on, but we are done welding this one little section. So we're gonna have to drill these holes out. Now, right in the center of both of these, we're gonna drill that hole out. We're gonna take this step bit we're gonna throw this bung in there, and uh, like I said, there's this little recess on here, we're gonna drill it out so the hole's this big, and then we'll be able to weld right between inside of here in this little burr. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. So let's get this all welded up. I got this hole drilled with the step bit, and the reason I only use 16 gauge metal for this is because 16 gauge metal is the thickness of it anyway, for the stock arm, but also you basically only touch on the edges when you're welding this piece. Now this drops right down into here, and uh, as you can see, that's basically touching the corner, that's basically touching the corner, and that's basically touching the corner. I didn't get it perfectly centered, so this side's a little further than this side. It doesn't really matter all that much, thankfully, because we have this whole thread system going on here. But I'm just gonna weld around this edge right now, and then we're gonna repeat the process for the other side, and then we'll have a full adjustable camera arm. Oh, we got those two tacks on the bung, one on this side, one on the other side. I'm gonna lay it down the table now, and I'm gonna weld a little bit of each side. I'm gonna keep spinning it around so we keep it nice and level, and uh, then we'll do the same to the other side, and then we'll have the camera back on the car and adjust it. Lots of fun coming. Dogs aren't allowed on the school bus. Woof.
finished welding up the hub assembly side, so the only side left to do is the one that goes up to the subframe. But I got that welded all around. I'm not going to touch it because I'm letting it cool right now. Hopefully these welds, when they cool down, I get them in the sun so you guys can actually see them. But uh, we got some nice beads on there. It's not 100% perfect because it was stainless steel with welding up to mild steel, which wasn't terribly different, but it's 16 gauge up to some thick stuff. So we got it looking pretty good. Now let's move on to the next piece. This other bung dropped in here. We're about to tack weld it up. Here's what it looks like without the threads on there. It's real flush. It looks real good. Everything's nice and welded up. So let's go ahead and let's get this thing finished up. All right guys, so I just finished up welding this side. This bung is in here nicely. This one was out here cooling. So I'm gonna have to thread these two together and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all in one piece. Put those two controller pieces together. I got Rust-Oleum paint on there and to speed up the process a little bit, I took my torch to it. But look how good these two look together. We'll be able to thread this all the way in so they're butted together or we'll get full extension. So we can go stock camber or negative 30, whatever your little heart desires. So let's get to it. Let's throw this on the car. Let's see what we get. Before I go ahead and completely throw this into the car, I did want to point out to you guys that this is how this is going to lock into place if you don't understand how a camber arm usually works. So this is just here. One spins to the left, one spins to the right. And since these are going to stay stationary, this is going to move and push this in or out. And then these outer nuts right here, these are going to lock it into place. We'll be safe and we'll have the same amount of camber and it won't move. So let's throw this in. Right, guys so i got that camber arm in there i got it all tightened up i actually wound up threading it out a little bit so we didn't have an insane amount of camber because i don't have this car's wheels yet but we just test fitted the rs's on here and they look really good they're not an insane amount of camber on there it's only about negative six right now but it looks really good and i really like it but hopefully you guys do if you stay this long in the video definitely leave it down in the comments and stay i stayed i don't know i love interacting with you guys and you guys know that so just comment down below i stayed or whatever you want your thoughts and opinions on this car and i'll make sure to get back to you guys and i love getting back to you guys liking the comments and all that fun stuff all right guys that's me in today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed don't forget about the 20,000 subscriber giveaway make sure you're subscribed hit that post notification bell and follow my instagram at tilson underscore tdi please let me know down in the comments guys what you thought of today's video what kind of videos you guys do want to see while i'm out here on my lock down i can't leave the house so let me know also give me some insight on what you guys thought about the welding some improvements something i could do for next time maybe some crazy colors on the control arms let me know down in the comments what you guys think um let me do down in the comments if you guys are safe if everything's going well what kind of cars you drive what you're working on currently in your little lockdown quarantine and uh just make sure you guys are smiling don't even put you down keep positive this will get better and uh just know i appreciate you guys every day i love making this content for you guys i hope you're smiling i hope you enjoyed today's video and remember i'll catch you next week. Peace.